So why is vitamin D back in the news again? It seems like there's something new about it every single week that we're reporting. And last week, the United States uh, Preventive Services Task Force said not to take vitamin D. And this time they did a meta-analysis where they pooled 11 studies on 31,000 people that were over 65. And what did it show? It showed that there's a benefit to vitamin D, but it was dose related. And basically they're saying if you're over 800 IUs a day, then it'll probably be useful at preventing fractures. And these are people over the age of 65. And there's no benefit if you use less than that. And they found that if you did use that, that the risk of fractures was, was down substantially. So it would be something that we, just our common sense tells us we should be using. Well, it's a lot cheaper to take vitamin D and prevent fractures than it is to pay all the money for, for the people that have hip fractures. I mean, it ruins their, well, he, here's their the lives for a while. Here's the problem with these organizations. They come out, they make a lot of statements based on the evidence that they look at. And they don't look at all the evidence because one week they're going to come out saying one thing, the next week they're coming out and saying things that are different. In this particular study, it showed a 30% reduction okay, in hip fractures and a 14% reduction in all fractures if people were taking closer to 2,000 units a day. And the Institute of Medicine some time ago came out staying, saying that they thought that up to 4,000 IUs a day was safe, which is pretty conservative because when you look at that data, show me somebody who's been poisoned by vitamin D and had a problem. I mean, there's a death every couple of years from all the vitamins together, even when they're abused uh, in a terrible sort of way. So it's not like there's a big risk here. And people can have a lot of problems if they have a hip fracture. Oh, it can be lethal, particularly if you're over the age of 70 and you fall and have a fracture, or over the age of 80. I mean, the death rate may be close to 20%. So that's, that's not a small thing. And now that Americans are living inside, not outside, they're not getting sunlight. You're not in the middle of the day between 10 and 2 absorbing those UVB rays on their plain skin. Particularly the elderly. You know, most of them are inside. They're inside. A lot of them in rest homes where, you know, there's they don't get outside at all in a lot of these places, even though in some places they obviously do. So at the same time, one size fits all is the wrong answer. We can't just go around willy-nilly and giving people an arbitrary amount of vitamin D. So I think it's good for people to ask their doctors, if the doctors don't volunteer it, to do a vitamin D level and yeah. also to do a DEXA scan. Exactly, and see how, how what are your bones like. If you if you're tend to be on the... Th- uh, the bones are on the thin side and you've got osteoporosis, you need to do something. And it's probably not going to be to take those bisphosphonate drugs either because there are a lot of problems with them. When the problem is vitamin D deficiency or calcium deficiency, which is a sunlight deficiency a lot of the time, then we should go back and, and fix that problem and do the natural things to help bones recover, which we can do. We don't get much vitamin D in food. We don't get much uh, from sun because we're not in it. You get a little from fish, I guess. A little from fish, uh, maybe a little from milk because it's enriched. So most of us are going to wind up, because our levels are below the level that's acceptable, there's an epidemic of vitamin D deficiency, to take something. And if people are going to start getting in trouble, I'd, I'd rather take my risk that way than to make the assumption that because we don't have hard data that we can't use our common sense to try and decide exactly how much vitamin D we need.